another beautiful Sunday that the Lord has made. It's good to see you all. I hope you're happy to see me too. Okay, God has been so good to us. Let's put our hands together and say a word of prayer. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made and we will all rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you because you've been so good to all of us. You've been kind, you've been faithful. We thank you for how you've helped us throughout the week and the privilege to be able to come into your presence. Lord, we pray that you grant us the grace to praise and to worship you from our hearts and grant us the wisdom to listen attentively to all that will be taught today. Cause your word to be entrenched in our hearts. Cause us to be able to meditate on your word and not just to be hearers of your word, but to be doers of your word so that our lives will get better by the day in Jesus' name. Thank you because you've answered. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the service. enjoy the praise session. Now it's time for our nuggets. And our topic for today says how to become a smarter you. Part two. At age seven, you should have learned how to read and should start reading to learn. This month's nuggets are to teach you how to become a smarter you. Number one is pay attention. We continue from last week. Last week we had four, so we continue from number five. Number five, make sure you see the board or flip charts, etc., and the writings on the board clearly. If not, please let your teacher know. Six, make sure you are sitting on a good, comfortable seat that lets you pay attention. Number seven, 
If you are studying on your own, to pay attention means to look to your books. Number eight, if you are using a device, that is a phone, a tablet, an iPad, etc., study time is not game time. <laughs> Study time is not video watching time, unless it is related to your study. When you pay attention in class as you study, you are starting the process of learning and studying. You are cultivating a good habit. Next week, we shall look at the second thing you can do to become a smarter you. Remember today we looked at number one, which is paying attention. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello Royals, it's time for the word and our topic today says tough times. Hmm. How many of you know the meaning of the word tough times? Okay, so I need you all to sit up, don't slouch. Get your Bibles and let's dive right into the Word of God. How many of you know the game Scrabble? How many of you play Scrabble very well? If you know how to play Scrabble, you will find out that sometimes when you have an opportunity or a space to spell a good word that can fetch you a good score, the other person playing with you will try to block you. Does that determine whether you will lose the game or win? No, of course not. Until the game is over, there is no winner or loser. Many games are like that too, like football, tennis, etc. You try to move and your opponent tries to block you. The more you try to win, the tougher the games become, and that actually makes it interesting. At that critical moment, what do you do? Do you give up or stay strong and see the end of the game? Joey was a very smart and lovable boy. In the house, if you needed something done smartly, it was the one you would send. You would always hear his dad say, Joey boy, Come and get this for me. And as quick as a fox, he would run to his dad, all legs and smiles. It was all well and good until the people around began to get upset. Can you imagine? Must it always be him? What's so special about him? Can't we do better than him? And unknown to Joey, the jealousy and the hatred was building up. And one day, when his father sent him to deliver food to his brothers out in the fields, before he could realize it, he was in a pit and naked. What happened? Now let's get the details from the source. The Bible, which is a royal manual. Our Bible reading is from Genesis 37, 18 to 28. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the system. Now the system was empty. There was no water in it. Then just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother? His blood will just give us a guilty conscience. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he's our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers 
pulled him out of the system and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Sad, right? But the end of Joseph ended as an amazing story. Make sure you read it up in your Royal Scroll this week. Now let's take a closer look at Joseph. How did Joseph come out of all the terrible things that happened to him? Joseph was able to overcome because God was with him. And Joseph showed by his actions that he had the spirit of excellence in him. Point number one. Joseph did not become disrespectful and rude to his father and his brothers as a result of the dreams of greatness that God showed to him. He continued to obey and serve them faithfully. Point number two. Joseph humbled himself as a slave in Egypt. He obeyed and served his masters diligently. Did you hear that? He served diligently. Point number three. Joseph lived in obedience to God by saying no to sin. He lived in obedience to God by saying no to sin. Point number four. He continued to believe God even when things continued to get worse. Point number five. Even in prison, Joseph did not give up on life. He obeyed the prison wardens and carried out all his tasks faithfully. Now, point number six. As a prime minister, Joseph obeyed Pharaoh and served the whole of Egypt with the wisdom of God. He didn't do it by himself. He did it with the wisdom of God. Point number seven. Joseph obeyed and honored God by forgiving his brothers. Having heard all these royals, I have some questions for you. If I come to your home or neighborhood or school and ask about you, what will they say about you? What is your attitude towards others? Are you obedient and respectful or are you rude and arrogant? What do you think about serving others? Do you gladly do chores? Or does your mom always have to scold you before you do your chores? Are you so loved and so you are spoiled and don't even clear the table or even wash your plate after eating? What is your attitude in tough and difficult times? Do you throw tantrums, insult others and refuse to do as expected? One thing you will find in the life of Joseph is that everywhere he found himself, no matter the challenge, he lived a life of obedience and service. Beloved royals, when you live a life of obedience and when you serve others faithfully, especially in tough times, you are living a life of excellence. And just as the spirit of excellence promoted Joseph later in life, when you live a life of excellence, you are actually walking in the path to greatness. Now let's look at our lessons. Our lesson number one. Joseph loved and feared God and respected and loved his father. Lesson number two. Even though his father loved him above his brothers, he was not spoiled. He still ran errands for his father. Lesson number three. Joseph never forgot what God told him about his future and never stopped to obey and believe God. Lesson number four, God never left Joseph. God was with him and made all his dreams come through. A truth for this lesson. Truth number one, when you live a life of obedience and serve others faithfully, you are living a life of excellence. Truth number two, faithful service and hard work with the help of God will eventually lead to success and greatness. Truth number three, 
It doesn't matter where you are or what is happening around you. You can live a life of excellence because God is with you. Truth number four. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Okay, Royals, let's take our memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. And it says, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Now I need us to take it together. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Okay, Royals, I have a few more questions to ask you. Do you think you can live an excellent life? How have you been handling your schoolwork? And I have a very popular quote that I'd like, also like to share with you. And it goes thus. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. Our home play for this week. Starting from today, be serious with everything you do. Draw a daily timetable to guide you. And as you achieve anyone, please take it and give yourself a good pat at the back. All right, Royals, we have come to the end of today's service. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Telegram channel. Download the quiet time for the week using the link showing on your screen right now. And don't forget to be part of the next Intel's chat room by sending in your questions on any of the topics we have studied and also any other questions you have to any of these numbers via WhatsApp, Telegram or SMS. Bye Royals! Go and conquer your world in Jesus' name. Amen.